With the release of the DJI Mavic 3, it was an exceedingly good craft. It did have all the features that you would want. The odd thing for me was the zoom and the normal lens all in one. Sadly, at the release time, the price of it was extremely high due to this double lens arrangement. With the release of the Mavic 3 Classic, the craft was basically the same, the camera arrangement was different. By doing this, it made the craft a lot cheaper and also DJI gave you different buying options. The option of choice for me was with the DJI RC remote controller and fly more kit. Inside the Classic 3 box was the remote controller, craft, some leads, extra joysticks, extra propellers and a power supply. As you could expect there was high demand for the Classic when it was released. I did manage to get one in the end through Droneworks Island. I will leave a link for these guys in the description below. The quick start guide was, as it suggested, a very quick start guide, but I will leave a link for the manual in the description below. The power block for charging is rated at 65 watts. The output lead has a USB-C plug. Two folding propellers are in the kit, marked A or B. These would fit onto the corresponding motors on the Classic. Different remote controllers are available, the DJI RC, RC N1 or the RC Pro. I bought the kit with the DJI RC with the screen built in. In the past I have had remote controllers with mobile phone or iPad connections on them and I found them a little bit awkward to use. Because the joysticks screw on and off they do provide you with a spare set just in case you lose one. On the underneath of the remote controller there's a place where the joysticks can be stored. There is no need to over tighten the joysticks, just finger tight will be sufficient. Above the screen there is the flight pause or return to home button. Next to that is the cine, normal and sport switch. To the right of this switch is the power on and off button. Above the buttons is the status LED and battery level LEDs. The built-in screen measures 5.5 inches with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels. On the bottom of the remote controller there are two screw holes on either side. These are used to fix a lanyard connector to them. The USB-C socket underneath is used for 1. Charging the battery inside the remote controller and 2. Enables you to connect it to a PC for any updates. Under the flap is a USB-C socket that is not used at this time. Also a micro SD card slot. The two screw holes on the bottom can be used to connect accessories. An air vent, C1 and C2 programmable buttons. An area to store your remote control sticks. On the top is the gimbal dial and camera control dial. The record button and focus stroke shutter button. Internal antennas and speaker output holes. The remote controller works at both 2.4 and 5.8 GHz. It has a long range transmission as it uses O3 Plus technology. Up to the period of time of making the Mavic 3 Classic, DJI over the years have really got to grips with their game and have now produced a flagship of drones. The takeoff weight of the drone is 895 grams. Now the dimensions when folded without the propellers is 221 by 96.3 by 90.3 millimeters. To protect the craft, propellers and camera, they do provide you with a storage cover. This is extremely easy to fit and also remove. It is made from plastic and rubberized straps. When you first get your Mavic 3 Classic, you will find that there are small protective tabs. Now these are normally highlighted in yellow. These will need to be removed before using the craft. These are normally only fitted for transportation purposes. Most of the yellow protective tabs are very easy to remove, others that are on the gimbal are not. 
To gain access to all the yellow tabs that have to be removed, first unfold the front arms followed by the rear arms on the drone. Remove the sponge from behind the gimbal, again that is only there for transportation purposes and will not need to be used again. As I mentioned earlier, removing the gimbal protection stickers can be quite difficult so be patient, they will come off. With all the other yellow tabbed protection stickers, they will come off very easy indeed. The vision systems and infrared sensing systems can be found all over the drone. These comprise of the infrared sensing systems, downward vision system, auxiliary bottom lights. The heatsink on the bottom of the drone will get warm when in use. These are the horizontal omnidirectional vision system. There is an air vent at the top and also behind the camera and another at the rear of the drone, the upward vision system and finally the horizontal omnidirectional vision system. Under the flap and above the battery is a USB-C connector, also a micro SD card slot. Access to the SD card is easier when the battery is removed. To remove the intelligent flight battery, press the textured part of the battery buckles on either side of the intelligent flight battery to remove it from the compartment. This battery is a 15.4 volt at 5000 milliamp per hour battery with smart charging and discharging functionality. To initialize this battery, it will need to be charged first. In the classic kit, they do provide you with a DJI 65 watt portable charger. The plug will correspond to your region. The AC power supply can be between 100 and 240 volts AC, either 50 or 60 hertz. Plug the USB-C connector into the back of the drone underneath the flap at the rear. And to charge the remote controller using the USB-C connector to USB-A connector Plug that into the USB-A connector on the charger. The charging levels on both the drone and the remote controller can be seen on the LEDs. These will pulse indicating the state of charge. When fully charged the LEDs will go out. There is a good number of micro SD cards that are recommended for use for both the remote controller and the drone. When fitted into the remote controller, it does enable you to do screen recording, also to store your maps that you'll be using when flying in areas without any Wi-Fi. The Mavic 3 Classic already has 8GB of built-in storage and it does support the use of micro SD cards to store photos and videos. When fitted, use the DJI Fly app to format them. With the batteries charged in the remote controller and also the Mavic, it's time to power up. As a precautionary note, it might be advisable at this stage, first setting up the drone, is to remove the propellers, just in case. You will need a DJI account to register your drone. If you haven't got one, do so now. You will also need the username and password for the Wi-Fi that you will be using. I know you probably won't want to hear this, but I would suggest strongly that you go through the manual. Now, the manual is available on the DJI website, but I will leave a link in the description below for a link to this. I know that there are a lot of you out there who have already had DJI drones, so a lot of this you already know. But for a newbie, I would strongly recommend that you do read the manual. Simply follow all the on-screen prompts. These will guide you through the initialization of both the drone and the remote controller. As with a lot of DJI equipment, they do updates regularly. I would suggest again strongly that if there are any updates, do them immediately. Some of the updates can be quite large, so a good strong fast internet Wi-Fi connection is required. It will take a little bit of time when doing any of the updates so be patient. 
it is just a simple case of watching the screen and follow all the prompts that they give you. It will keep you updated in its progress. While the updates are in progress for both the drone and also the remote controller, it is essential that you do not power down either the remote controller or the drone. Before doing any updates, ensure that you've got a full battery in both the drone and the remote controller. It will detect any SD cards that are fitted and will allow you then to switch to the SD card from the internal memory. As with any new equipment, there's always a learning curve, so be patient, take your time, there's no major rush and you'll get there in the end. There is also available the Fly More kit for the DJI Mavic 3. Now it'll do either the 3 or the 3 Classic. This was quite useful for me. One, it gave me a case, which I must say is a very good quality case. It will transform from a case to a shoulder bag to a backpack. I have seen some other cases in the past and they're nowhere near the quality of this case from DJI. If you're not interested in purchasing the Flymore kit, you can buy the batteries separate and all the other associated parts that are inside the Flymore kit. The items inside the kit comprise of a couple of batteries, a triple charger, a 12 volt charge adapter with leads. There is a total of one and a half sets of propellers. In essence, there are three Type A and three Type B propellers. Interestingly, the tips that are orange are made of rubber. When you combine the spare propellers from the Mavic 3 plus the Flymore kit, you have two full sets of spare propellers. The car charger is rated at 65 watts. It comes with a Type C to Type C lead. On the charger is a USB A connector. This has the capability of using both for charging the batteries and also the remote controller. The battery holder or charging tray will hold up to three batteries. Using the type C connector you can use it for both the mains adapter or car charger. As with any of the DJI batteries when you first receive them they are in hibernation mode. To take them out of hibernation mode you simply charge them. All the years that I've owned DJI drones I've always numbered my batteries. I try to use the batteries sequentially in the number order shown. The interesting thing with the triple charger, it will enable you to put in all three batteries into the charger. Although the batteries are smart, so is the charger. It will pick out the one that has the most charge in it and charge that first. When that is charged, it then selects the most charged one out of the two batteries that are left. Depending upon the amount of charge that is left in the battery, the batteries can take up to one and a half hours each to charge. This can give you up to 46 minutes of flight time. The DJI RC maximum operating time is approximately four hours. The Hasselblad camera has a 4 thirds CMOS sensor and has 5.1K HD video capability. It has obstacle sensing and up to 15 kilometers transmission range. This will depend on which country that you are in. I must admit that the DJI Mavic 3 Classic and its associated parts, the quality is extremely good, including the Flymore kit case. Everything you see on the screen regarding the drone and its associated accessories will fit inside this case. Personally, myself, I will be using the case only when I go out and about on different flying locations. I know over time I will get a hard case to fit everything into. This is just a simple personal choice to do this. The Mavic 3 Classic does comply with C1 certification. I hope you found this information of use to you. Thank you for watching.